your forecast first. Sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, for the most part, just another dry and hot day. We've had a few little showers that uh, did pop up earlier. As you can see over into portions of Sangamon County, into Christian County there. But 97% of us didn't get a drop of rain, and that will continue to be the case all the way into most of next week. 89 in Champaign right now with the humidity. Some areas feeling like the mid-90s, 94 in Springfield and in Effingham. Okay, through the rest of this evening, just another hot one. Staying muggy, come back. We'll let you know when things are really going to crank with the heat and humidity combined together. WCI 3 News starts right now. on WCIA 3 News. A homeless man was beaten to death. How those who knew him are struggling to understand why. It looked like teachers would be wearing face shields this fall. But the Illinois State Board of Education has had a change of heart. Like, super hot outside and it's really refreshing. What's better than a cold glass of lemonade on a hot day? How about what the money raised is going toward? You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. We're going to miss Don. We're going to miss him a lot. Friends of a homeless man in Champaign beaten to death during a suspected robbery yesterday are taking time to remember him tonight. Good evening, I'm Paul Cicchini. Todd Ledbetter was 56 years old and well known to churches and homeless shelters in the area. WCI 3's Andy Olson is live in Champaign. Andy, it's a sad day for the people who knew Ledbetter best. Yes, Paul, definitely. Some of his friends uh, who knew him best have started some memorials here across the street from West Side Park, including on the bench where police say he used to sleep. For those that knew him best, they're still struggling with the news that they woke up to this morning that he had passed away. Police are investigating after they found Todd Ledbetter beaten to death near West Side Park. He's been a frequent visitor to see you at home for the past two years. He was always a favorite of the people working there. We'll never forget him quoting scripture to us, to our other friends, our staff, and countless interactions where he would encourage us when we were out there on the street trying to uplift him. Flowers were left at the site of his death by friends this morning. Right next to Emmanuel Memorial Episcopal Church, where Ledbetter was also a friendly face. It was sometimes hard to see his, uh, Todd's gentleness through the ravages that life had dealt him, but he was really a sweet soul with a very deep faith, and uh, we will miss him. Mother Beth Maynard says Ledbetter would often come and pray with them. She's spoken with more of his friends, who all say Ledbetter was kind, gentle, and caring. The people who assaulted him were trying to get money off him. And the, uh, this person remarked to me, if they just asked, he probably would have given them the money because he was that kind of person. For those friends that knew Todd and loved him, um, he was a joy to have around. And he will be missed tremendously. Now, police say that witnesses saw three black men rob and beat Ledbetter, but so far, no one has been arrested yet. In Champaign, Andy Olson, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Of course, Andy, update us if any arrests are made. Thanks. Here's a follow-up now. A man accused of shooting a 73-year-old in the stomach was in court today. Goffert Whitley was charged with attempted murder and aggravated discharge of a firearm. Police say he was on a bike when he shot the man last week. They believe the two knew each other. If convicted, Whitley could spend up to 30 years in prison. Champaign police are investigating after a teenager was shot last night. It happened near Eureka and Walnut Streets. Police say the 17-year-old victim was in a car near Beardsley Park when someone in an SUV shot at him. Officers say he continued driving to 4th and Bradley, where he was shot at again. Police believe this was targeted, but no arrests have been made. Rantoul police are investigating gunfire. It happened near the corner of Ader and Mather Drives. Someone who called it in says they thought they heard fireworks go off around 1 this morning. They went outside their home and found bullet casings in the street. Officers laid evidence markers on the ground and interviewed neighbors. Police say there are no suspects at this time.
Six days ago, three people were killed at a business in Springfield. Now, the families of the victims of that shooting at Bunomatic have set funeral plans. Marsha Strumfer's visitation is on July 5th from 3 to 6. Her funeral is on the 6th at 3 at Stop Funeral Home in Springfield. Chris Miller's family will hold a celebration of life on July 3rd at Pawnee Christian Church. William Gibbons' family already had a visitation on Wednesday. Here's an update now. A judge in Clay County ruled against Governor Pritzker today declaring his COVID-19 orders void because his emergency powers expired 85 days ago on April 8th. The court order says the governor on his own has no constitutional authority to restrict a citizen's movement or to forcibly close a business once his emergency powers expire. The judge said those powers belong to the Illinois Department of Public Health and local health departments. The governor's office plans to appeal the ruling and reminded people to continue to wash their hands, watch your distance, and wear a face covering. Vermillion County is reporting four more positive cases of COVID-19 today. One of those is a grade school aged child. That makes 72 positive cases in the county. Two people have died there. The state has announced 36 additional deaths. That makes a near, nearly a total of 7,000. There are 869 new cases of COVID-19 in Illinois. Nearly 145,000 cases have been diagnosed in the state. The positivity rate for the last seven days is 2.6%. We have new information tonight about what schools will look like in the fall. The State Board of Education is clearing up part of its back to school plan. Face masks will be required in schools when students and teachers return and face shields will not work as a substitute. The board said face shields have not been deemed effective for source control and are only to be used when other methods of protection are not available or appropriate. The original plan released by the governor and ISBE last month said teachers could wear face shields. Teachers said they would work better with instruction so students could see them pronouncing words and better follow along. In response to the COVID-19 outbreak, Eastern Illinois University is extending the deadline for freshman enrollment, deposits, updated test scores, and transcripts. The due date is now August 24th. There's a big change for the fall of 2021. Students will no longer require an ACT or SAT test score for admission to EIU. It's now optional. Students can apply for fall 2021 starting now, free of charge for a limited time. Applicants with no test scores but who have a 3.3 GPA in college prep work will meet admissions criteria. Those with no test scores and lower GPA will have their credentials reviewed to determine eligibility for admission. Here are some new details. The next wave of marijuana growers and sellers in the state were supposed to find out if they got their licenses this week, but Governor Pritzker pushed back the deadline with an executive order. The delay causes problems for the first wave of social equity applicants who might have to re-up on leases or other financial commitments they made in this financial process. You know, state government, you know, has said to these applicants that they want to do right by them. And, um, you know, the reality is I've, I've been in government for a long time. I know that things don't always go as planned, uh, but the lack of certainty is something that is very troubling for these applicants. The company, Majority Minority Group, helped people with prior drug convictions or people living in communities affected by the war on drugs to apply for a state license to open a legal marijuana shop. Many restaurants have been able to stay open during this pandemic, some by recently serving outside, where you can soon go shopping doing the same. Also tonight. Now uh, I finally get to have a bit of relief that I've been looking for for a really long time. Her son has a rare condition. How this six-year-old has a new friend to help with his care. High temperatures today as we recap things with the Almanac 90. We hit that 90 degree mark and will continue to do so pretty much every single day for the foreseeable future. Lots of days of heat. Stagnant unchanging pattern. We'll look at when there are some small rain chances in the forecast coming up.